guidance. But one of the outcomes of that was to identify that uh, Ada, Bingham, and Kootenai County could not share their population with any districts outside of their boundaries. And so that also ended up essentially defining districts 2, 3, and 4, 14 and 50, 20, 21, and 22, and 31. And so when the commission met for a third time this January and started working, <clears throat> let me express what that really kind of effectively did. When you're talking about uh, Idaho County North, uh, you've locked in Lewis, Nez Perce, Leta, and Benoit Counties, and Kootenai County. And so you end up with Monterey Boundary, Shoshone, Clearwater, and Idaho counties having, uh, only uh, having uh, two districts in that huge area. And so all of a sudden, we started creating these helicopter districts. <clears throat> in South Idaho, uh, by the time that you took into account the Democrats claiming Blaine, Lincoln, and Gooding County to be a single district, in the cities of Twin Falls and Pocatello being districts, um, with Ada County being pulled out of the mix and such, you ended up with only nine districts more to establish, and you had over 23 counties that were going to be part of those. Uh, clearly, you know, our sympathies are with districts 8, 32, and 35. Those are huge districts. Um, let me total that concept between what the Democrats forced upon us and what the uh, court ruled upon us. 18 districts were defined out of the 35 with over 50% of the population, but it only used about 15% of the land area of the state. So after redistricting was done this spring, the task force did sit down and we talked about you know, the process. And it was agreed. The system is broken. There is definitely a need for some kind of a change to allow Idahoans to go ahead and Republicans to get their voice heard in how the legislative districts are laid out. We then went ahead and, and looked at what was on the table. Uh, you, may be, you may remember this last spring or this last winter in, in January, there were two resolutions that were passed. One resolution uh, proposed adding a seventh commissioner and dividing the commissioners based on the uh, percentage of legislators in the, in the uh, state house. Um, another one proposed having one senator per county, and both of those had uh, unanimous support or near unanimous support. So. We knew we were of a number of minds, especially considering the fact that our platform currently recommends that redistricting be returned back to the state house, to the legislature. Uh, that, uh, all those different ideas still are floating around at this particular point, and when we pulled the regions, we were only able to find that one of those options got about 40% support. Uh, another one, 28% support, and the support trailed off after that for even some imagined thoughts. And so we were unable at this point to really come to a, a type of a solution to pursue because all of the solutions would require amending the Constitution. So we need as a body to agree on what the solution would be. And so that's where the Commission left off at this point handing all this information over to the chairman, whoever should be elected tomorrow, and for them to go ahead and put together some kind of a group that could figure out what we as a body want and to go ahead and, and champion that, because we do not believe that the, uh, the process reflects the citizens, but uh, there are so many good solutions, we're not sure exactly which ones we want to go ahead and pursue. So, Norm, thank you for giving me the opportunity, or, you know, and I will uh, look forward to helping whoever gets involved in this process in the future. Thank you. Without, that would be
be a good wrap up of the work the uh, task force did. And um, as Steve said, the, the new chairman working with the Central Committee can decide where to go for the future. Uh, and certainly uh, recognize Steve for his great work and his committee with the uh, a Chairman's Award earlier this year at the winter meeting. So thanks a lot, Steve, for your work. Okay, next we, uh, we're going to change topics just a little bit, um, talk about one of the very important things that's on the ballot this fall, and that is the Students Come First referendums. We're going to have an update from Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tom Luna, and our First Lady, Lori Otter. Please welcome Tom and Lori. It's, it's great to be here and uh, talk to you about what is uh, by far going to be one of the most important decisions that Idahoans will make this uh, coming November. Uh, as, uh, I, as the meeting began, I too was impressed with the prayer that was offered. Um, I, I can tell you that uh, as a Mormon, I'm not quite exactly sure what last call means, but, uh, but I definitely agree with the prayer that uh, we make sure Obama has a soft place to land come November 7th. <laughs> I'm going to take some time and, and share with you the laws that were passed uh, and, and are 